What is up, everybody? Jester here, and today I wanted to continue down the path of showing you my most important early game farms in No Man's Sky. So much to cover today, no time to waste. Let's get right into the portal and get straight into it. First up on our list today is going to be Oxygen. Now, early game and oxygen farm is super, super useful. Not only can you use oxygen to get yourself a better yield of some certain resources, but you can also refine the oxygen down into carbon. Not to mention oxygen will recharge your life support system. Now, carbon is going to be what you use to build most of your wood type structures and most of your early game stuff. And then uh, you can also take your stacks of carbon and re-refine it into condensed carbon, which is used in a lot of the uh, upper recipes for different things very very useful next on our list today is going to be rusted metal or rust this stuff can be used to refine down into ferrite dust which is going to be super big for making metal plating which is what you need for your supply depots your miners i also like to build in metal so uh, it's just absolutely a necessity to have a pretty good sized farm when it comes to rust to turn into ferrite dust going forward with the ferrite dust though you can take that and put it back into a refiner and now you can make pure ferrite. This is also used for many different things, including stands for like your biomes, things like that. Once you get that down into pure ferrite, you can actually make magnetized ferrite out of that. Now I've got a better way to do that. And let me go ahead and show you. And it's gonna be a little quicker instead of doing three or four steps. Let's get over and I'll show you that now. The more efficient way to go about getting the high-end ferrite is to just make a magnetized ferrite farm. Find you a deposit, collect that, and then you have it. The other beautiful thing here is you can actually downgrade that magnetized ferrite back to pure ferrite in one step versus three with the rust. Just much more efficient and much less time consuming. Next up, and maybe even more important than the first two, is going to be a copper mine. Now, copper can be sold. You can make a little bit of change here and there with it, but it's not super expensive. Its real talent is when you put it in a refiner, it's going to make chromatic metal. You're going to need that early game for solar panels, batteries, certain other recipes, and you always need it when you don't have it. It's kind of a pain to go around and find. So a copper mine is definitely something you want to get early, early game. Now, I didn't just start making this video to say, do this farm, do that farm, do this farm, and you'll beat the game. What I like to do is be more efficient with my builds. In the last video, and I'll put a card in the screen here for you, I made a little emerald mine. Today, I want to show you how to expand on that with different resources and make things much more efficient where you have multiple things in one place. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is that expansion. This is my gamma root slash uranium farm. I know that it takes uranium to plant the gamma root, so it just made perfect sense to put the gamma root here. We've got 25 biomes. It usually nets me about 15,000 of the gamma root resource for whatever I need it for. Now, what I like to do is as I'm searching for these hotspots and I see something like gamma root, I go ahead and pick it every time. That way, when I get to my spot, I know I've got at least a seed that I can propagate. And I'll get into more of that here in just a minute. But uh, this should net me all the gamma root I need for anything going forward for the rest of the game. Sometimes when you're out searching, you get lucky. In this case, I found sulfurine. I also found pyrite pretty much in the same spot with a good power source. So now I'm able to go ahead and plant cactus flesh. Again, 25 biomes. That should give me all I need throughout the entire game. Now, even with the walk and pick method that I like to use when I'm searching for these hotspots, it's very, very unlikely that you're going to find enough of any given resource to plant 25 biomes at a time. So what I usually do is I just go ahead and plant what I have, and then I will propagate. Because once these things are planted, they're planted, they always stay there. And then you can use the profits to go ahead and reseed the rest of the farm. It just makes it so much easier. And the beautiful thing is once it's planted, it's always planted. You never have to go back and replant any of these things. Next up on our list today, and the first money maker is actually going to be a living glass farm. This one features 25 biomes of gamma weed. We also have 15 biomes of frost crystal. But what I actually went looking for when I started this farm was Mordite. Because Mordite is one of those things that you can actually put into your inventory, throw into a refiner, and as you'll see here, it makes Vesium, which is one of the main things you need to make the lubricant portion of the living glass recipe. Once you have everything collected, you simply need to go into your inventory, select an empty slot. You're going to need five total pieces of glass, which is just made out of frost crystal. And then you're going to need one piece of lubricant. That's going to be 400 gamma root and 50 fecium. Once you get that, go ahead and go to another empty slot, and then you can just simply craft the living glass. 566k per. I can make 45 of these every four hours, so a pretty lucrative farm in the long run. 
The last farm I would recommend is gonna be for nanites and that's what I call the animal farm. Now this build, we kind of went a little bit ham with. This is a scorpion build. Shout out to Captain Steve from three years ago on YouTube. Go check him out, it's a wonderful build. But what you need to do is scan all the fauna in the area and find out what they yield. Uh, this case, we put down the automatic feeder, put creature pellets in it. We're getting some Regis grease back and some milk. We also get uh, leopard fruit from this. And uh, it's just kind of a wonderful little farm. You're going to need several because there's tons of different ingredients. And uh, you can do all that in the nutrient processors. I put that inside the scorpion. But once you get these recipes down, you can take them to Kronos up here in the anomaly. And you can give those to him. He will give you nanites for your wares. The final thing in the video today is going to be not something I think you should build, but a place I think you should visit. I wanted to do something nice for the community because I realize sometimes it's really hard for people to have enough time to get out and collect all these resources to get these seeds and the things going for their farms. So I kind of wanted to put something together to make that a little bit easier on everybody. Now going into my base list, you guys will see that I basically have everything you can possibly think of. The only thing I don't have is a dedicated stasis device farm, but I want to focus on Jester's garden today. Because I decided to do something that I think is going to be fun. Let's jump over there and I'll show you what it's all about. 60 biomes. Five each of all 12 plantable resources. Some of those are actually resource-based plantings, but they're all here. Everything you would need to seed whatever farm you could possibly use is at this location and available for you to come and visit. There is frost crystal. There is gamma root. There is fungal mold. Here you see solar vine, gut rot flower for feceum, the mordite plant. We also have cactus flesh, as well as star bramble. Then I figured, what the heck, let's include it all. This is gonna be five rooms of nip nip buds, but if you're traveling the universe, be careful, that's illegal cargo. Going forward from there, album and pearl. Again, these resources, you need to actually plant with resources. Uh, so you'll need to collect the resources to plant those, but this will make you a little bit of money. We also have Gravitino Host, and last but not least, we have the Sack Urchin. This is just a wonderful little place for you to come and get everything you're going to need in one spot. The coordinates for this base are in the bottom left corner. This is going to be on Steam or PC, so you'll need to either be on PC or know someone on PC to access this base. But uh, it's there for the taking. I built this for you guys. I'm not going to be taking anything from it. If for any reason you don't warp directly to this planet, this is the one you're gonna be looking for in the system. Wakinda Ichi, it's a viridescent planet, easy to find. Warning though, guys, first come, first serve on this. Certain things like cactus flesh, solar vine take 16 hours to grow. So and I can't guarantee it'll be there when you get here, but uh, definitely come check it out and get all the seeds you need for your farms. Hopefully this information and or this farm build for you guys helps somebody out. That's the main intent. And uh, definitely like the video, comment. I love reading comments. And uh, subscribe to the channel. I've got a really big build coming up. I think you guys are going to enjoy. But until next time, guys, thanks for watching to the end. Bye.